Now we'll take a short break, and when we return, gender equality is facing new threats under COVID-19. What can be done, and what progress has been made in the 25 years since UN member states adopted the landmark declaration on women's rights? Welcome back. In 1995, when the 180 UN member states met in China for the Fourth World Conference on Women, the landmark Beijing Declaration for the Platform for Action was adopted as a global roadmap for change. The Platform for Action imagines a gender equal world where each woman and ch girl can exercise her freedoms and choices and realize her rights. 25 years later, progress has taken place, yet the, place, the pace of change is not enough, according to the UN. COVID-19 has made the situation worse, as data show more women are falling into extreme poverty as a result of the pandemic. Now, as the UN General Assembly convenes a high-level virtual summit on Thursday to mark the anniversary, what progress has been made over the past 25 years and what challenges remain? Joining me in Beijing are Professor Li Jinjiao from Beijing Foreign Studies University and via Skype, Li Hongyan, National Program Officer at UNESCO's Beijing office. Um, ladies, uh, welcome to The Point. Uh, why don't I start with you, Ms. Uh, Li Hongyan, uh, at UNESCO. Um, 25 years after you know, uh, the adoption of Beijing Declaration, are you happy with where things are when it comes to women's rights? Um, yes, I am. Um, 25 years ago, um, I was a 22-year-old uh, fresh graduate from the college, and I actually worked at the organizing committee for the Fourth World Conference on Women. And at that time, to be honest, I had no idea about gender equality. <laughs> so, um, and today, um, I'm working in, the, in this great cause of promoting gender equality and to achieve quality and inclusive education for all uh, boys and girls. So in that sense, I really feel that this is a big progress and it's individual, individual um, change, but I believe it's also a change representing um, changes for many, many people. Yeah. Sure, there's a lot uh, worth celebrating for. Um, Professor Lee uh, from Day Y, uh, what do you think? Are you happy with where things are? Uh, yes, you know, it's hard to believe that 20 years have passed since the 1995 Fourth uh, World Women's Congress, uh, I rem a conference on women. I remember that I was just graduating and I was busy translating all the UN documents. And uh, 20 years have passed. I, I want to say that compared to other countries and uh, particularly other regions and other countries in Asia, China has really achieved all-round development for women. I'm really proud of that. Right, but you know, looked at globally, um, many are not happy with the progress that we have made. Uh, for example, Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres said last year that change is coming at a pace that is too slow for women and girls whose lives depend on it. Uh, what do you make of that? How do you make of the uneven growth worldwide? Yes, and, uh, indeed. We, yeah. um, as China is developing, we really see this uh, gap uh, between China and the uh, Asia-Pacific region and uh, the vast area of Asia and uh, Africa in particular. I, I think uh, it is because uh, regional unrests are too many and too close to each other. And uh, also, there are a lot of uh, economic uh, crisis, global economic crisis, and regional disputes, and also uh, a lot of political turmoil. All these contributed to this slow development for women's peace and, uh, develop, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. prosperity. Well, Ms. Li Hongyan, uh, what do you think? To what do you attribute to the, uh, the slow progress uh, in realizing women's rights? I think um, a big area for people uh, to realize um, real gender equality um, is um, there are still many people who have um, not much awareness about gender as a concept and um, still hold very tightly the traditional gender norms and the um, gender power, the power relations between uh, men and women is still unbalanced. Um, and there are some really um, strongly held um, gender norms, uh, social norms that needs to be tackled. Um, I think that is the key 
you know, that is um, affecting the progress on um, gender equality. Right. Uh, can you tell us what the UNESCO has been doing to help in that regard? UNESCO, um, we take uh, gender equality as one of the two global priorities. On the other one is Africa. So you can see how, imp how much importance um, UNESCO is attaching to uh, the issue of gender. So UNESCO has a global strategy on gender equality in and through education. As you know that UNESCO is leading um, the um, implementation of the, and the achievement of uh, the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is about inclusive, um, equitable quality education for all. Um, and gender is a very important aspect uh, in pro promoting quality and uh, inclusive um, education. So um, the global strategy for gender equality um, in and through education uh, proposes three main lines of action. The first is to uh, get good data to inform actions uh, that promotes gender equality. The second one is um, about policy and legal framework and planning frameworks to advance rights for women. And the third one is about um, the, co the quality of teaching and learning. Um, so uh, especially the, the, the third aspect is the area that, um, that I have personally been working on, which is uh, fundamental because it's very empowering. So um, quality education needs, um, quality education will empower people, but it has to be delivered in an empowering way. Yeah, Professor Lee at Bay what do you think? Uh, what should be the indicators, in your opinion? What should be the KPIs, uh, if you will, uh, when it comes to gauging the progress uh, of the rights of women around the world? Um, if we talk about women's uh, progress, uh, I, I am based on you know my profession as a professor at the university, and also my uh, interaction with teachers at different levels. I think. Uh, um, a very important indicator is women's uh, enrollment at all levels of schools. And in China, we can see that um, at uh, primary school level, the, uh, the, the, the rate of uh, young girls' enrollment in schools equal exactly to the rate of boys. And when it reaches college, we can see that the percentage of women enrolled in college actually has reached more than half, and uh, also pre uh, graduate school and the PhD level. So I think uh, the, uh, this trend actually can be observed by some other developed regions uh, in Europe and uh, in Americas. Uh, but uh, in vast areas of Asia and Africa, we see that the um, uh, young girls' enrollment in schools uh, still lagging behind. So education is a very good, very important indicator. The other indicator would be women's participation at decision making and the different levels of governance. In that aspect, China witnessed a, a small growth uh, from, uh, I believe, uh, uh, from one to two percent. So we, in that aspect, in women's partic political participation at different government levels, China can do more. Uh, and China can learn from uh, uh, many other countries. So right. Um, I, I want to highlight. And also women's participation in labor force, uh, that, uh, in that aspect, China has made very impressive progress. Certainly, and that's uh, underrated, uh, I mean, around the world. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, China has very high female labor participation rate. Um, uh, Ms. Li Hongyan, um, you know, talk about COVID-19 and this outbreak. Uh, data showed that an increasing number of uh, women actually face domestic violence. And the stimulus package uh, unproportionately favor men, uh, the elites. Uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what can be done to address that issue? Um, in fact, um, gender-based violence uh, is, a uh, is a very important work uh, of UNESCO. Um, we put a lot of emphasis on preventing uh, gender-based violence in schools. Um, of, of course, domestic violence is an issue and it also affects children um, who um, are exposed to um, violence between parents or between um, family members and sometimes they themselves are victims um, of domestic violence. 
So we address um, the issue of violence uh, and bullying in schools, including uh, cyberbullying. Um, um, so for the past um, a few years, um, that has been one major uh, strategic uh, priority for UNESCO in ensuring health and well-being uh, that can help to promote a quality um, mm -hmm. of education. Um, yeah, so um, to adopt a whole school approach, that means not just the teachers, uh, the school principals, but also students themselves and their parents right. and also the community members, as well as um, the service providers outside. Certainly, lots of issues to um, you know, take care of. Exactly. I want to thank Work both of our guests today um, for this all the yeah. time we have. Uh, Ms. Lee from Baywai and also Madam Lee at UNESCO. Thank you both so very much. And that will do it for this edition of The Point. Thank you for watching. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing.